Anyway, um, hi, main channel. This is a little side video. I want to do more of these where I'm not actually reviewing a product and talking about something, although I will be kind of reviewing a product. The uh, Gishelli Labs distribution deck I've been hinting at for like a year now. Um, I've decided that I've been adding shelving here that I just had over there. And I'm like, you know what? Because every time I swap things out, like I need to review this Fusion F11 from Black Ice and it's a big son of a bitch and I can't fit it where I normally have a bunch of stuff on the desk. So now I could just take things off as I need them. LA90, the Ch Amp from Earman, the I, my fucking TA22 I love, the own stuff. Um, and so back here, behind where the magic happens. I can unplug these speakers for now because that's going to be mildly in the way. You like these red uh, short extensions? Uh, I actually have blue ones as well, and I was doing red and blue for monoblock things, but that's all over now. So anyway, here's where the magic happens. And by the magic, I mean the absolute terror and chaos. Uh, here's my little fiber optic distribution going on. That is a porta. And I'm probably just going to rewire all this stuff anyway, because basically, so the, the, the heart of the situation is this down here. Oh my God, look how many fucking Dakoni tips there are. There's just, there's just so many Dakoni tips. There's so many Dakoni tips. It's like French fries in a car. Anyway, here with the lovely, um, Araka. No, that's not Araka. What's her name? The stabby one from My Hero Academia. This is the Singzer uh, SU6. Singzer, like the SA1 with the amp, but no, 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 this, I reviewed this a while ago. And this is the heart. Because I got a laptop back here, my original extra sticky rubberized Toshiba Ultrabook. And so that's the heart. There's so many hearts. So I got my NEC monitor, I got the Toshiba laptop, and the Toshiba laptop's old old as dirt and I don't want to keep plugging things into it and installing drivers so that's where the SU6 comes in SU6 here is an audio bridge it's just like the uh, Matrix X SPDIF 3 that I reviewed only bigger so this USB is the only input into this unit and then I have two HDMI outputs, which one goes permanently to an R2R DAC over there, and the other one is here. These, all these cables are looped through the handle on this absolutely perfect lifetime plastic table. I bought this house with this table, so I respect the plastic table. Um, all of these sit usually out of sight, and when I get a DAC to review, pull this out, and I could either have coaxial digital, or I could have I2S, or I could run fiber optic. By the way, Amazon Basics fiber optic best baby. I even have the RI cable AES, which is the Italian made one. And I'm just like, mmm, I taste like a Sicilian. Um, and then I even have this, which is a 3.5 millimeter, which is actually delivering signal all the time. And that's coming from the Giselli Labs distribution DAC, which we'll get to, it's down there. Gotta get this out of the way first. So this thing, it gets USB in and outputs everything else. It has two coaxial digitals, if you count that BNC with an adapter, your AES. You've got a max clock, a world clock out. I believe that's an out, not an in. And then you power it with this. There's a, a mean well power brick here. Fun little factoid in case you don't remember. If I unplug this, it's still working. It'll work for up to 60 to 80 seconds because it has a super capacitor in it because that's how it's, it's so like better than everything that it has a super capacitor so that the power fluctuations never happen. It's like you plug it in, it takes a minute or two to warm up and like charge the super capacitor and then you can just unplug it, move it around to the base and plug it in and it never stopped working. So that's kind of cool. It's not a battery, it's a super capacitor. Anyway, so this is my source. This is basically, I wouldn't even call it my sound card. It's just converting digital to digital. And then, What's that? Silicone plug. And then under here, under all this, under the wonderful guise of fiber fucking optic splitting, because even though I have all these outputs, these are the ones I need to be able to use on the desk, pure go. All the other stuff that sits around needs to have signal get to it. 
and I only have one fiber optic out on the SU6, so this digital audio splitter, one to five, so one in and five outs. And then I have another one of those over there for splitting, and I have another one of those over there for splitting. So you can split almost as many times as you feel like with fiber optic, because it's just re-amplifying the signal and it should have no loss. So we might have a, we might have to play a game where I actually do a test like that. But we're here to dig out the, this has been buried in here for months under this beautiful Ikea shelf, which has protected it from dust and just, I've been putting shit, all that stuff that's over there when it wasn't being used in a review for IAMs or something, I would just flip it around and you wouldn't see it in the review. So now here, we go. And the reason I haven't done a proper review of this is because it isn't really that interesting looking. And it's very fragile. You see, I had a conversation with Gino from Gishelli Labs, and I'm like, look, here's my thing. I have a fuckload of things I need to test at once. Usually amplifiers, sometimes DAC amp combos, which this takes care of that. DAC amp combos are easy to compare. You split your fiber optic seven times and plug in them all at the same time. But if I have, let's see, what are my amplifiers over here? Let me show you what we're trying to eliminate. Wallpaper in the horde, by the way. So Singer SA1, topping A90, not the D. I haven't, I haven't used this area in a while because I've just been, well, lazy. Plus it's harder to plug in. I've got the Burson. Don't remember your name and it's not written on the front. What's, what's the name of this one? The Burson Play X? No, no, Burson Little Guy. Um, I've got the Wall 11 Topaz here. Uh, I've even got the IFI, uh, what's the one? Uh, I, IFI, I can, IFI can, yeah, whatever that one. Point is, all of these are just pure amplifiers, which means they need signal. Now you could take a single DAC that's like XLR output and you can buy XLR splitters. But even I know that if you split an XLR signal like three times, you're probably fucking with it. Plus that's a mechanical connection that is now going there and there's, there's ground loops, it's all bad. And it's... So your best bet is to use multiple DACs like you see here. So this whole shelf, Topping D30 Pro, Musician Pegasus R2R, Lox G D50, and all these stay off until I flip this master switch. And then everything lights up. Well, this one you have to actually push the button to light it up. But now all these are on. This is on, this is on, this is on, the UV user on. There would be more in here, but it's literally, here's the thing, like the Musician Pegasus is an R2R deck, and it has XLR and RCA outputs. And you can't use them at the same time or it freaks it out. That's what the Denifrips Aries taught me, which is over there. The Denifrips Aries was like, I'm using XLR, it's great. I'm using RCA, it's great. I'm using both, give it a day. It just starts freaking out. So that would mean that most of these other DACs are fine with using balanced and unbalanced at the same time. That means I can run two amplifiers off of one DAC. So I gotta do a fiber optic split and get it. And so basically I would have eight amps. I would need at least four DACs and ones that aren't picky like that and don't use R2R. And that's just a lot of bullshit. So what I asked Gino from Deshelly Labs to do is, can you make me a DAC with multiple outputs? But not just a splitter. Can you individually amplify every channel so it's all separate? Because there's an amplifier in every DAC. So the DAC chip in this is probably, this one has to be a Sabre because it was after the fire. But, um, there's one DAC chip generating a small little signal that is here is the output. And it's going to individualized amplifiers to individually amplify two balanced XLR outputs and then four uh, RCA outputs, all simultaneously with no backtalk, with no problems. And I don't know if he's got it implemented in this. I requested that, could you make it so these are stackable? So that you could just take a fiber optic and loop it to another one. So that if you needed more than the current six outputs, you could have 12. And that's what I've been using for basically all the amps that come up on my desk here, except for the TA-22, because that's just a coaxial digital. I just plug that in. But like this this amplifier right here, the Gishelli Labs Archel, Archel 3. If we follow these XLRs, they end up right here. This other one, 
LA 90. And then we just have leagues and scores of these very expensive uh, world's best RCAs that I'm plugging into everything from the Rebel Amps to the Earman Champs to anything else that just ends up on my desk and even swapped them. I have actually one coming over here now. That's pushing the TA-26 because I was having issue. That's warm, which means you're still running. Um, I was having issue with the DAC I was using for that. So this came over. So now imagine all of these, and this isn't all of them because I've also got this coming out of it. All of these and all these ARC XLRs, which one's here and then the other ones are just hanging around on the floor, I think. But all of them, every single one of them, there it is, is coming out of a single, and air quotes are hard because I'm holding a bunch of shit, but a single DAC. One DAC. Now, the argument is Zeos needs this because Zeos is, well, fucking Zeos. But do you need it? Because they're not sure of the ramifications of offering a product like this and how much would they charge because it was it's like a one-off and it's literally the boards like the reason it's so fragile is like there's nothing there's no case to hold it together it's mounted to a piece of lexan which by the way real buttons look real buttons to choose your inputs i don't even know what this one does actually oh shit i probably shouldn't put that oh god um this is a mess i'm going to reorganize this anyway so let's actually disconnect this power out. This is the first thing the power has gone off. It just uses a standard uh, plug like everything else they have. I'm just got to be real careful, especially on these RCAs because they get tight. Okay. I want to show you them. This is the genius of this because nothing like this exists. Like I've had some own products that have a pre-out and a line-out RCA. So you get two sets of RCA outs and even maybe a balanced. But, like, I need to be able to push signal to 10 different amplifiers at the same time, and I don't want to keep bouncing digital copies. So this, right here, was what they sent me. And it is not much to look at, but it is beautiful. And I, I was tempted even to bring this to, like, Axpona or to Capital Audio Fest and just show it off. Because it's just, like, there's nothing over here. Because it doesn't need to be anything over here. All the work's being done, and it's just reamplify, 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 reamplify. It's at the bottom. So it's like, this, I feel, would change the lives of many a crazy motherfucker like myself. Because you want to have two or three amplifiers. You want to have a tube amp, you want to have a solid state, and maybe you want to have a hybrid or a class A. And if they're not combos, like the TA-22 over there, then you need to provide a, a, a DAC signal. And I'm not a huge proponent of like, you got to spend thousands of dollars on DACs. You know this. So, but what would this be worth to you? Because I think Giselle Lab wants to know, how much is a distribution DAC worth? And they... I literally just told them, don't bother with full-size XLRs. I wouldn't even bother, like I would offer a version that's just balanced outputs, because it's a balanced DAC. They're just offering this because they could fit them. If these were all TRS connectors, all the quarter inch balanced, it'd be perfect. You could fit 50, he could said he could make as many as you could fit on the board, you just keep adding the same amplification circuit. As long as the power supply can keep up with the demand for generating well, you need four volts for XLR, then, you know, you could just have it stack and do as many as you can do on a normal power brick and then have this bridge up to another one and just maybe have one that's all balanced and one that's all RCA because you're a psychopath like me. What are your thoughts on this? This thing is cool as fuck. And there's only one in the world and I'm holding it. It doesn't even have an LED that glows, but it does have three like cool power buttons. Anyway, this is the distribution DAC I've always been talking to you about. They've even put the connections on the front. I think it's got front connections, rear connections. It says R1. I think some of these are the jump overs to go to another DAC, which I actually haven't tested, which would actually give me another. I think I was using coaxial digital. You can see it's clean. So I take the coaxial digital and pop it out, but I wonder if it'll take the fiber optic too. This is another thing. They had a real hard time getting these when, I, when they were trying to build this. They're like, there's none of less. It was one of those parts shortage days or weeks or months. So yeah, this thing is 
super unique in the space. I don't think I know of another company that sells a DAC that is just, I mean, well, other than this, stop. Ugh. Put you down for a second. The only other thing I could think of covered in waifu stickers is the DM7, which is the topping. That is simply eight balanced TRS outputs. But I don't think you can tell it to be stereo output, stereo output, stereo output, stereo output. That would give you four, which would still be less than the six that this is pr producing. But you can't like tell it to do that. It'd be great if you could. Then I could say, hey, buy this, and you get six of those balanced outputs. But right now, and it's only USB in, that's another thing. This has got, it could have USB in. He asked if I want it, and I'm like, nah, I don't need it. Got an expansion board here for things. So this is as close as you can come, but I think you'd have to do something with virtual audio cable to get it to copy your left and right to your back left and right, center sub left and right, and rear left and right, which I still have. I bought all these cables, by the way, because I was gonna set up was and am going to set up a very small personal home theater using uh, studio monitors. So we'll see how that works. But yeah, so that's the only thing that I think that comes close. And that thing is like $600. I feel like this would be like $600. Don't get me wrong. It's not going to be a cheap unit. But I feel like real audiophiles who just have an Arish, an Arkle 2.5, a tube amp and a hybrid and something else. And just want, I want everything to get fucking signal and I want to plug in one wire, boom. Well, you'd plug in one wire to this and then plug in a fuckload of wires to this. So yeah, that's my little uh, cleaning up behind my desk, reorganizing rant, cause I got to get these Violetric stuff on. I finally got this thing. This is the topping EHA5, which is the uh, electrostatic amplifier, so I want to play with that. And I got to review this big bastard here. And I brought my stacks down. Where did I put my stacks? Over there. Okay, so yeah, no. Thoughts on that. Also, welcome to the back of my goddamn nightmare, which now has to be extra cleaned. You know it's bad when you see this thing, which is an IEC to two plug adapter that's just sort of floating in the middle of nowhere. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's not a fire hazard or nothing. I really I do have a smoke detector right there, but what I need is a Halon system. Anyway, support me on Patreon and Subscribestar to watch me install a Halon system. Um, any questions or comments, leave them in the comments. To Love Rue, best show ever. Uh, yeah, Patreon and Subscribestar support this channel. See your viewers early, participate in yard sales. Tell me if you like videos like this, where it's just not. It's just not. I just need to not and it's like 11.30, and I feel like I had coffee, but I didn't. I had sweet potato pie, which might have had enough caffeine in it. Let's shut this off. So it's not burning the points. And uh, yeah, check out all the sport things, and I'll see you in Munich if this comes out before or during Munich. I don't know, maybe I'll make a ton of these. And while I'm in Munich, nothing but weird content will come out. Also, face reveal coming. And I'm not going to show my face on camera now until I've shown my face on camera in Germany. Because then I've broken the, the seal. Then it's the official, like, 10-year anniversary. Fuck it. We're doing it live. Anyway, leave a like and a subscribe and check out In Ear Fetish and all my other channels. And I'll talk to you on the flip side.